Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the next mock interview which we are going to conduct on this channel. If you are looking the video for the first time, let me quickly tell you what exactly we do. So we take a mock interview where based on the resume, I ask question to the candidate on RPA UI path. The candidate answers at the end of the video, I provide the feedback to the candidate and answer to the questions whichever he or she has answered incorrectly. There are other mock interviews as well available on the channel as per different experience and skill set. In case you are looking for other experience interviews, you can always refer to the playlist which is available. I'll provide the links in the descriptions and you can refer that. In case you also want to have such live conversation or mock interview, I'm just an email away. Having said that, let's get started. Okay, so Anupama, I have received your resume for the mock interview. Thank you for mm -hmm. joining in. Okay, so the way we are going to structure this interview Anupama is I'm going to ask you certain question based on your resume. Okay, you uh -huh. will answer me at the end of the interview. We are going to have a feedback session where I'll be telling you that what are the topics you need to improve upon. Okay. Sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, so let's get started by uh, having a quick introduction. Why don't you introduce yourself? Sure, uh, I'm Anupama and uh, I'm an RPA developer working since three years. And um, I have done a couple of process and uh, which are on production now. Okay. So I'm right now working uh, as an RPA developer. Okay. So can you tell me any of your project which you are comfortable talking about? Okay. What was the project? What was the problem statement? How did you make it? And what are the different things available in the project? Any sure, of the project sure. which you are comfortable with? Sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, we have uh, did a couple of projects for our uh, recent client. And uh, one of that is the health check where uh, we get to check the multiple applications, what they use in their company. And uh, we have designed a bot uh, such way that it is scheduled to run every day and it checks all the applications which are used in the uh, company. Uh, and it is going to send a status report. And we use the Excel automation and we use the Excel as an input data. And uh, we used uh, dispatcher for the input data, and then uh, we used two performers uh, to execute the business logic and update the status in the send the uh, status report to the concern department or to the business. So that is one of the project. And the other project, uh, what we did was the invoice extraction, and uh, we updated the uh, SAP application to with all the information we extracted uh, through the invoices using OCR engines. Okay. Okay. So if I just talk about the first project, which is called mm -hmm. the health check project, what is mm -hmm. the status of this project? Is it a live project? I hope it's mm -hmm. a live it project. Is. It is. And it is a live project and we get to check the status and stuff like every, every day we log in. So. Okay. So it's a daily robot if I understand. Yeah. Right? yeah. And yes. as you have told me, you have built it using dispatcher and performer, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now, uh, on one particular run so what is the timing of this bot when exactly it is scheduled to run it it uh, starts at uh, six o'clock in the morning okay six o'clock so that is the dispatcher or that is the performer uh, the running process i mean you the schedule the thing yeah 6 a.m which process will trigger dispatcher performer. or perform performer performer okay so how would the performer get the data Mean means how it will get the data for processing from where uh, from the dispatcher so it is mm -hmm. like oh okay you mean to say uh, what time it starts yeah it, it's at uh, dispatcher starts at six okay this dispatcher starts at six so uh, let's say it's 6 a.m in the morning monday okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. bot has started and then what is the next thing the bot will do it will go to okay, an excel so file it is, yeah it is in the excel file and it mm -hmm. is going to add all the excel input data to the queue Mm -hmm. And then um, it's in the RE framework, right? So mm -hmm. it is going to fetch the data from the get transaction and then it is going to do, do the process in the process uh, stage. Okay. So Excel, right? When you say this Excel, mm -hmm. where does the bot get this Excel as an input? For the dispatcher? Uh, from, the, from the? From the config file. From the config file. Okay. So in the config file, you have specified that this is the Excel. Specified the Excel path. Yeah. Okay. So let's say you have specified mm -hmm. the path as D colon data. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. how would you make sure that every day the correct Excel is available? Because mm -hmm. 
Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, if the bot is reading it, there would be somebody who is placing that Excel, right? Because mm-hmm. it's a daily process. So how does your dispatcher know that this is the correct Excel file? Because in the config file, I have put some location. I understand D colon data. Okay. Mm-hmm. And there is an Excel file. So mm-hmm. Monday, the bot goes pick that Excel. But how does it know that this is the correct Excel? It can pick any Excel, right? No, we give the exact uh, path and the uh, input data, right? The exact okay. path and the name of the location. Okay. So the complete Excel path is available in the uh, config file. Okay. Okay. So there is an always an Excel which is available at that part and you just read exactly. the Excel and you just continue, right? Now to read the Excel, which activity exactly. in UI exactly. path you are using? Uh, read range. Okay. Read range. So when you talk about read range, it comes in two mm-hmm. flavor. Right. One is yeah, Excel and one is workbook. Yeah. Right. So workbook. you are using workbook. Okay. Workbook, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So when you are reading this Excel, right, mm-hmm. what are the exception scenarios you have handled? Uh, reading the uh, Excel? Yep. In the read range. So you have used a read range activity, right? Mm-hmm. Read range workbook. So what are the exceptions which might come or which you have encountered or which you have handled in this process of reading? that data and loading into the queue? Uh, actually, uh, if it's an <clears throat> if it's an huge data, then uh, reading the Excel uh, may have uh, issues, but ours was not that huge data. So it was, we didn't get any exception, but there are chances where you have a, a loaded Excel and uh, it mm-hmm. takes a lot of time for the read range to access all the data. So that, that may have an exception, but for our, uh, we didn't get any exception for read range. Okay. Okay. Noted. Okay. So now you have got the data and the data is loaded into the queue. So on a daily on when the dispatcher is running, right? How many Mm -hmm. rows of data it is adding to the queue? How many? How many items? Sorry. How many rows are there? And uh, what is the volume of transaction? 10 items, 15 items, 20 items. 18. 18. So we okay. have an uh, um, uh, Excel of like uh, the name of what is the application, what is the link, what is if it's in a database, what is the connection string, and uh, we have those information in the um, Excel. Okay, so these 18. And if uh, it's a web portal you're checking, you have a login ID and password. Okay. So we have all those information. All those information is now loaded to the queue, Mm -hmm. right? Now in the queue, you have 18 items. Now Mm -hmm. after this queue, so 6 a.m. your dispatcher will run. Now what what Mm -hmm. is that? How does your performer get triggers? Once all the items are loaded, then it's going to take each one item from the get transaction and then it is going to get into the performer. Okay, but how the performer is scheduled? Is it a time-based or is it a queue-based? It's a time-based, not the queue-based. Okay, and what time it is scheduled? It is scheduled at 6. 6 p.m. The purpose. Same time. 6 a.m. Oh, you mean to say the performer? Yeah, performer. Uh, It is actually, it's within uh, uh, differently scheduled the dispatcher and performer, but Mm -hmm. it's like once you start the uh, process, it, it just goes on. Like it takes around 45 minutes. So, uh, but so dispatcher is just reading an Excel, adding the 18 data to the queue right Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. will take only not more than two minutes right yeah it's a small thing Mm -hmm. right but Mm -hmm. how would the performer know that i have to start at six two or i have to start at six five or i have to start at six ten how would the performer know No, actually, I didn't get it correctly. But um, uh, what I was, uh, what we did was like, we just uh, put it in the whole, uh, uh, the performer, it, it triggers right after the dispatcher is done, right? So that means it's a queue trigger. Right? It's a not a, okay, so we'll talk about all of this in a mm-hmm. bit moment. Okay. So, okay. So your performer is triggered. Now it is processing all the items one by one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now Mm -hmm. let's say after, so you have got 18 items. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now Mm -hmm. the robot was processing and after 10th item, you got some exception, right? The machine Mm -hmm. was crashed, whatever, Mm. whatever, right? What happens to the remaining items, which are already added to the queue? 
they're going to uh, run after, um, I mean, um, the bot is not going to stop. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if the if you're getting, getting an exception also, the next items are going to run. Okay, the next items are going to run. Okay, but mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, so let's say after the next run, all of the items got failed. Okay, so mm -hmm. you have got 18 out of 18 10 got successful 8 got fold 8 got failed even after retries mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. now what mm -hmm. happens to those eight item is your robot going to retry them or how yes they is? it is going to retry it is going to retry and if still uh, they, they are going to uh, fail then we are going to send uh, emails to the concern department or to the business that these are failed so they are going to take from there okay and can you just tell me what exactly happens in the performer part what does the robot do uh, with this transaction? Okay, uh, so in the performer bot, like when it comes to the web portal checking, so it mm -hmm. is going to check the login to the web uh, web portal and check like we have a HR portal. So it is going to check the with the email ID and password and it is going to check whether the web portal is working or not. And if it uh, it is checking the database, then it is going to check whether the connections are, um, I mean, is the database connecting or not? So mm -hmm. those are the uh, things uh, the performer is going to check. Okay. And when you say just talk, let me, let us just talk about this HR portal, right? So this HR portal credential, how mm -hmm. is the robot going to get this credential? From the orchestrator get credential. And which activity I'm using to get this credential? Uh, get credentials and what is the output of get credential it's the string and uh, secure string for the password okay okay so uh, i i see that you have done uh, this uh, connections also right on the database mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what dependencies i need to add in ui path to connect it to database uh, we should have the um, uh, concern packages and mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, um, download packages for those activities to show up and then we use connect and disconnect. Okay, connect, disconnect, and then you fire the query. The connections. And you do all the steps. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I have a question on the dispatcher again, right? So okay. whenever we are adding items to the queue, right? I have two mm -hmm. activity. One is... Mm -hmm add queue and another one is bulk queue right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which one are you using we use bulk because it's a data table so okay and uh, so you are using bulk queue right now i have a counter question mm -hmm. i have mm -hmm. an excel i have used mm -hmm. a read range activity i have got 18 items in the data table mm -hmm. okay now mm -hmm. these 18 items from the data table i have added to the queue mm -hmm. Okay, now to mm -hmm. add to the queue, I have two options. One is the bulk queue, which you are using, where you load the mm -hmm. entire data table to the queue at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other option is you apply a for each loop, take items one by one from the data table, and then add it to the queue. Mm -hmm. That is, what, uh, okay, add queue item. Mm -hmm. And that is the add queue item. Now, what is the difference mm -hmm. between them? Difference is like um, add queue item, you can uh, just, uh, it's in queue item, right? And mm -hmm. bulk queue item, it's in the data table. Okay, no problem. Okay, so, okay, fine. So we have done with this one. We have done with dispatcher, performer and everything. So now let's say today Anupama has done this thing. And now the solution is available in the development with you, right? Development orchestrator. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you move this packet or the nugget packet from the development orchestrator to the production orchestrator in your company or what are the steps you have been following uh, to deploy to the development um, we have to just uh, create the same environment in the production too okay and then we have to uh, push the folder to the um, uh, production environment Okay, so we are going all directly. the dependencies in the nugget package. Okay, mm -hmm. so are we going to directly deploy it from the development orchestrator directly? To no, the we, we in between we have the UAT and testing, right? So after every, all that uh, testing UAT is done, then it mm -hmm. is going to go to the production. Okay, okay. Okay, so I can see that uh, in your resume, you have mentioned mm -hmm. that you have experience in uh, developing end-to-end -end with standard RE framework template, right? Because you're a dispatcher performer. So mm -hmm. uh, just some questions I want to ask you on RE framework. How many states mm -hmm. I have in RE framework? Uh, 
four. Okay, and in case I get I get a business exception in the process transaction, what happens to our framework? Business exception in um, process transaction, right? Yep, yep. It it is going to uh, go to the get transaction and um, get the other uh, transaction item and process. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, so in terms of your uh, resume, I am just going through it. You have mentioned that mm -hmm. you have experience in waterfall as well as agile, right? So can mm -hmm. you talk me that how does it differentiate when we are doing RPA project. So how would a waterfall project, how would a RPA waterfall project would be different from a agile RPA project? Hmm, hmm. Uh, actually in waterfall, like uh, all the, uh, I mean, um, all the process is done like in, um, in a um, um, kind of like uh, phases, like first the analysis, then the whole, um, analysis, then they're going to hold a, a design and then they are going to start a pr um, development and then testing. But mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to agile, uh, um, of course, uh, when it comes to the agile, especially in the uh, development, like it is, it is going to be going to the whole process. Like once the user stories you pick, they are going to first um, develop then test and then they are going to it's, it's a continuous process it's it is not going to wait for the whole production uh, sorry whole development to be done then the whole testing then the whole uh, production it's it's it is not going to be like that in agile. so that oh. is how the, uh, that is the difference between but i didn't work in um hmm. uh, rpa work uh, waterfall okay. but we only did agile Okay. Okay. So I see that you have worked almost on all the email technologies which are available. Okay. So mm -hmm. let's say, uh, let's say most of the companies are using Outlook, right? So mm -hmm. whenever we are reading emails from Outlook, right? What activity do I use in UiPath? Get, get Outlook. And what would be the output for Get Outlook? It is a list of mail messages. Okay, list of mail messages, and then we are going to use it. You okay. iterate through it, yeah. Okay, okay. Now, whenever there is a defect which is coming in the production, how do you mm -hmm. debug it? Or what are the next steps which you guys are following? Okay, so you have deployed this process, whichever we were talking, mm -hmm. this health check process. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we deployed mm -hmm. to production. After, let's say, three weeks of working, we got an exception mm -hmm. or we got a bug. Right, anything mm -hmm. exception the object reference not set to an instance or selector mm -hmm. not found. Now, mm -hmm. what are the next step you guys are following in your current organization once a issue is occurring in production? Okay, uh, so first when we have an issue in the production, first thing what we do is like we are going to check uh, all through your exception emails and then we are going to get the uh, production logs and see uh, where actual uh, thing is going. I mean, where our actual exception is thrown and we can try to fix in that uh, our, uh, workflow. Okay, but how will, will you know that where exactly is that exception? Through the log messages we can find, right? That okay. is, uh, I mean, yeah, through the log messages you can find where actual exception is thrown and Okay, and let's Maybe. say you have found that exception, then what are the next step? So you have found that, okay, so uh, you were working and you found the exception and you fixed the exception also. Now, what are the next mm -hmm. steps? Then, then again, we are going to uh, push it to the production. Once okay, and, we test it and then we are going to push it again. To the and what would be the steps that as a developer you are going to follow? So we are going to do the, I mean, we, we are going to do the unit testing and then... Okay. Um, then again, uh, the testing team and the, the business will uh, finish off the UAT. And then uh, for two weeks, we have the hypercare period where uh, you can test on the product uh, prod environment. And mm -hmm. then we are going to um, deploy the production. Okay. Okay. Super. Okay. So I have got this last question for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in your, uh, of this, all these uh, projects, which you have worked, right? What mm -hmm. is the most challenging task which you have got? Okay. And how did you mm -hmm. manage to resolve it? Okay. Uh, when we were doing the invoice extractions um, mm -hmm. and uh, loading it to the, uh, actually it was in the Excel. So where uh, the challenge, what we faced was uh, 
um, reading the Excel as we discussed earlier. So uh, we decided um, to do, I mean, because it was, it was a huge data in the Excel and it was taking a lot of time for the read range to read it. So uh, we decided to treat the Excel as a database and using the database string and uh, connection. Then uh, we got all the uh, details and the information data from the data table and then we processed it. So. Okay. 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 Thank you, Anupama. So I am done with my questions. Okay. So mm -hmm. let us jump to the feedback and then we can take any questions if you are having. Okay. Sure, sure. So first of all, you have the, I'll just talk about the questions which you have answered me correctly. You have given me mm -hmm. the correct answer for the get credential. You have mm -hmm. given me the packages which are correct, which is UiPath or database packages. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Then you were successfully able to give me the answer for the scenario which I have asked you for the RE framework. This unit mm -hmm. testing part and RP lifecycle is something which I am com uh, completely satisfied with the answer. Okay. Now yeah. coming to the things that which you need to improve. Okay. So the first mm -hmm. and the foremost thing is project explanation. Okay. okay? So the project mm -hmm. which you have explained me, right? So this mm -hmm. health check. So mm -hmm. you are doing that project on a daily basis. Okay. You understand mm -hmm. that what is that project, but as mm -hmm. an interviewer, I am absolutely mm -hmm. new and I am hearing the project for the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so it happens with me also, right? Whenever I am explaining my project, I tend to assume that the person who is hearing, he might understand these things, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I am listening it for the first time. So whatever mm -hmm. project you have explained it to me, I was not able to connect the dots. When I say connect oh. the dots, I was not able to understand that what exactly is the problem statement, what is the automation, how it is scheduled and how the pieces are connected. Okay. So mm -hmm. a good way of project explanation would be you first tell mm -hmm. that what is the problem statement. When mm -hmm. I say the problem statement, what is the manual step which the business is doing? Okay. okay. So what is the manual problem? So let's say there was X, Y, Z problem where the business was spending, let's say one hour to mm -hmm. do a certain task. What is this task? How does the robot come in picture? When the robot come in picture, then you talk about that. Okay. Th this is the robot, which is divided into two parts, dispatcher and the performer dispatcher mm -hmm. that does performer do this. And then this is the solution. And this is the saving, which we get. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a complete mm -hmm. story. Right. Rather than mm -hmm. pieces and all, we just project explanation can be a bit better. Okay. 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 And when you talk that this process in production and you have been working mm -hmm. on it, then some questions are pretty much obvious that you should be knowing very upfront, such as mm -hmm. how you have scheduled it. Right. So in your mm -hmm. case, a dispatcher mm -hmm. is working at 6 a.m. in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. And right mm -hmm. after that, the performer get triggers. Right. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. happens whenever you apply a queue trigger, which mm -hmm. means that whenever an item is added to the queue, as soon as the performer get triggers, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. just see, go back that what approach you have used in this mm -hmm. scheduling. Okay. That mm -hmm. is thing. Okay. Now exception wise. So simple thing, right? Whenever we do work as a developer, we mm -hmm. always have to code for exception. Now I ask you a simple question. What happens mm -hmm. the exception which you have handled in reading that Excel, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what are the mm -hmm. exception scenarios which might happen? So I will give you some of them. You might think more of them. Okay. So mm -hmm. someday the bot might go and see that the folder is black. There is no Excel mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. That is one exception scenario. The second exception could mm -hmm. happen that you are, the bot is looking for a file name ABC. And there is mm -hmm. a file which is named XYZ. Second exception. Mm -hmm. Third mm -hmm. exception could be that there is an Excel, but the robot is not able to read. Mm -hmm. Fourth exception, the robot is able to read, but there is no data inside the Excel. Excel can be mm -hmm. blank, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all of these scenarios are now your business exception scenarios, which you need to handle in this robot. Okay. okay? So mm. all this scenario has to be a part of your solution design. And whenever you are talking, you should do this. Okay. Okay. Mm. Now mm. the last question was bulk queue versus add queue. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is a simple mm -hmm. difference between bulk queue versus add queue. Both of them are adding the items to the queue. Bulk queue, mm -hmm. as you have already told me, adds the item at once. 
add q items at the item one by one now what is the difference mm -hmm. the difference is that bulk q item will allow you to add duplicates item to the q oh, okay? okay using the mm -hmm. add q item you would not be able to add duplicate items because add q item allows you to ha have a unique transaction okay mm -hmm. so in case yeah. of bulk queue you do not have the unique transaction in case of add queue item where are you adding one by one so you are have you are having that privilege to use the uh, unique reference and that way you control the duplicacy in the queue okay that okay. is why there are two activities available okay mm -hmm. apart from okay. that everything was good okay so that is all for this video i would like to wrap this video here Thank you for watching. I hope you found this interview insightful. If that is the case, please like this video, subscribe to the channel and happy automation.